Hello. Are you looking for some help in practicing the argumentative essay for the AP Comparative Government and Politics exam? Well, you're in the right place. My name is Suzanne Bailey, and I teach this course at Virgil Grissom High School in Huntsville, Alabama, and I've been an AP Comparative reader for over 20 years. So I've worked on the strategies that I teach my students that I would like to share with you um, as you watch this video so to help you be successful. When you look at the argument of essay, oftentimes you'll hear it referred to as free response number four, because it's the fourth essay you're going to see in your exam booklet um, after you finish the multiple choice and they give you your exam. What you'll notice is that the suggested time is 40 minutes, which seems like an awful long time, but that's because um, this is a different kind of essay than the others. You'll notice that there is no A, B, C, D here to kind of guide your thinking and make sure you're getting the points. This is worth five rubric points, but you've got to concentrate on the tasks at hand. This argument of skill is only tested in this essay, so you want to make sure that you can get all your points. My suggestion when you, when you approach this essay is to approach each section. Know where the points are and make sure that those answers are complete before moving on to the next section. So we're going to start with the most important point, which is this first one. And you'll notice what your tasks are because you'll have this arrow over here um, that will indicate to you where um, you are, what you're supposed to be doing or working your way through the um, argument. The first thing you need is to take a defensible claim about the prompt that's asked and um, a line of reasoning. So what is that going to involve? Well, um, the thesis statement is going to have to include the concepts that are in the question, right? So if we think about as a reader, what am I looking for in that thesis statement? Well, I'm looking that you talk about regime change, authoritarianism, and public support, right? Because that's what the question is asking about whether regime change, which is typically between a Democrat and authoritarian government. So in this case, moving towards authoritarianism would be supported by a citizens, right? But you also, and from a line of reasoning, you have three other concepts to look at, political stability, civil society, and economic development. Now, at first, some people get worried about like, how am I going to do that? How am I going to combine the, the words and the prompt with these others in my line of reasoning? But I want you to instead to embrace it. This is a hint, right? These words are here specifically because they make sense in terms of your line of reasoning. Um, so think about it in a positive way and use that as a way to, to help guide what you're going to do. So this to me is the most important strategy. You have got to take the time to make a T-chart so you can visualize the argument. It wouldn't be an argument unless there's two sides. Um, and what's important about making a claim is you can't blur the two together, right? You have to, to take a position. So I think the best thing you can do is actually write out what the two sides of the argument are. So for example here, a regime change towards authoritarianism would be supported by citizens, right? The alternative would be a regime change towards authoritarianism would not be supported by citizens. So those are the two sides of the argument. One is going to be my claim, and the other is going to be my alternative perspective. Now, you'll notice I'm also putting that word because here. Um, to get into a line of reasoning, I need some kind of a connection word, right, that's going to indicate that I'm doing some analysis. You are free to use other words, but if you want to be formulaic and succinct about it, simply taking a claim, using the words in the prompt, and using because naturally leads you um, into your line of reasoning. Now, what I've listed here is I've tried to give you reasoning that involves all three words. Remind yourself you only have to use one. But I mean, you're free to use more if you want, if it helps you clarify your argument, but you only have to use one. So in, in mind, like, how did I come up with these? I would think to myself, why on earth would citizens support authoritarianism? Um, so when you think of citizens, civil society, right, are groups, autonomous groups of people um, that um, are free from government control. And so why would they be willing to give up civil liberties and rights? Well, one, their goal, their stronger goal is political stability. Perhaps the society is very chaotic and they want um, strong government control to provide political stability. 
On the other hand, they might have a weak economy and they're looking for more government direction of the economy. Um, and so they're willing to give up some of their, their individual control over the economy, right, to it and achieve economic development, more opportunity, more jobs. All right, now let's look at the, the second argument. A regime change towards authoritarianism would not be supported by citizens because civil society rejects giving up its civil liberties, its freedom of speech and assembly. Um, they might be willing to give up political stability to protest their loss of individual freedom. And finally, this the, the idea that fear the government doesn't value rule of law, because obviously authoritarian regimes operate more by rule by law, may threaten economic development um, in that it might not protect private property or the rights of entrepreneurs to start businesses. So fundamentally, again, this T-chart is designed to help you do the two things that I'm looking for as a reader. I'm looking for a claim um, based on the argument that's, that you're being asked to write about. So using the same words in that argument can be very helpful and make it easier for the reader to see that you're answering the claim. And then you're giving specifically a line of reasoning. So let's see, give you a chance, right? I think a, a technique that I use with my students is to try to get them to think um, like a reader is I'm gonna give you these four thesis statements and I want you to look at them and see which one would earn the thesis point, which one is taking a side, making a claim and having a line of reasoning using one of these concepts of political stability, civil society, or economic development. So pause the video and take a minute, try to make see to yourself which one of these would gain, would gain um, a thesis point. Well, hopefully you picked B and D. Um, so let's think about, let's look at the ones that didn't and see why. A regime change to authoritarianism would not be supported by citizens in a society because, right? So the idea is this is, they, they accurately made a claim, but they didn't give a line of reasoning. So that's where I, I really like that word because, because it forces you um, to try to get to that line of reasoning. The last part where it says, if given a choice, citizens would always choose to live in democracies. Um, that's, that's tangentially here, but it's not specifically answering the claim. Right, so it's not saying whether a regime would be to, would be approved by its citizens. Um, so you need to be more specific there. Uh, so that would, and there's also there's no because, right? Like so that it, it's just too short. Um, B and D do a nice job of answering the question, right? Using the words in the prompt, and specifically tying it. So you can see what I'm looking for as a reader is that claim and a reference to a concept more than simply, so think about a description, right? More than simply I, I just stacking on a concept at the end, but leads to political stability because it values security and peace. Or in this case, right, it would lead to restrictions on civil society so citizens wouldn't um, support it. Both of these would get you a thesis point and would set you up well to add the evidence. So adding evidence. My second strategy about this is to put your evidence point, these two pieces of evidence together with reasoning. Um, so even though reasoning, you can only earn one point for reasoning, I just think it's a good writing style that you use reasoning, you tie each piece of evidence back to your thesis. It gives you a little bit of a cushion so that in case one of yours isn't, your reasoning statements isn't strong enough, right? Then you've got two of them to make sure you earn that critical point. Now let's talk about the evidence. In this case, I have to figure out which countries I'm gonna use. Um, in my mind, and just for, for this video, I focused on the, the two that to me tend to be more authoritarian and have more transition in them, which would be Russia and Iran. Um, but remind yourself that, notice that it says you can have two pieces of evidence from one or more course countries. So you can, have two pieces of evidence from one country, but that's hard, right? To be specific enough on, on the same country, my general recommendation is you use two different countries. If you're gonna use one country, make sure, like state specifically one piece of evidence is, and the second piece of evidence is. Um, and then remind yourself about the reasoning is that you've gotta tie it back to one of these course concepts that is in your line of reasoning. Right, so based on what your thesis is, you've got to tie this evidence back. 
So let's look at a couple of examples. So this would be what I've given you here is the first bullet would be the evidence point, And the second bullet would be a reasoning point based on the evidence. So if you want to pause the video for a minute and think to yourself, would you give do do does the evidence specific um, about that particular country? And secondly, does the reasoning tie back to the line of reasoning? Well, in the end, it's B that does that. So let's look at A. Let's see what's, what's wrong with A. Um, Russia has an authoritarian regime is not specific enough, right? I could intersperse Iran has an authoritarian regime. China has an authoritarian regime, right? There's nothing specific here about Russia that would get that point. So even though the reasoning statement um, is, is, is fine, if you don't have evidence, you can't get the reasoning. So that's an, another reason why I think it, it's good to like make sure you do this twice to make sure um, that you're getting these points. Notice the difference between this evidence point. This is about Putin moves to centralize power and restrict civil society, um, shutting down opposition newspapers and political parties have been met with protests. That's very specific, right? That's happened in Russia. That gets the evidence point. And therefore, this move towards authoritarianism would not be supported because of the political stability and the protest, right? That's a nice tie-in between both of these. Let's look at one for Iran. So that's, I gave it a star, right? That's the one that would get that reasoning point. Um, what about Iran? I've got two sets here for you as well. So pause the video and think about, look at these, which ones would you give points for? In this case, it's the A. So let's look, what's wrong with, with the B? First of all, if you wanna tell me Iran has competitive elections for the president and the Majlis, that's not particularly about authoritarian regimes, right? Like Iran is an authoritarian regime, competitive elections for the president and the Majlis is a part of the Republic, right? The democratic aspects. The A statement here is a strong one, right? Um, not only do I have a specific reference to the green movement and the dissatisfaction with the green movement, um, then there's a specific reference here to the civil society, um, which gets me that um, tie in with my line of reasoning. So that would get a star. Last but not least, this is in my mind almost the most difficult point because you have to remember to do two different things. Um, you have to give an opposing and alternative perspective, and you have to respond to that perspective. So there are two different things for one point. Um, how do you do this? Well, return to your initial T-chart. If you said that a regime change would not be supported, now you have to argue that it would be supported. So again, to me, that because it's really helpful, because you realize like to, to get this opposing perspective, you need to tell me how or why it would be supported. So let's look at this final example, right? I know as a reader, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for an alternative perspective and I'm looking for a response. I generally lean, uh, my students tend to lean towards rebuttal. Concessions are really hard to make and do well. And we're not asking you to rise to the level um, of, of refutation. I mean, you certainly can if you want, but rebuttal just means you've got to explain why it's wrong, right? Your argument, you made your argument. Why is your argument right? So let's look at this um, response and kind of see what I'm looking for as a reader. Notice that this one even starts with an alternative perspective. I think that's very helpful to the reader. Like, let them know you're starting your alternative perspective. So alternative perspective is here. The alternative perspective on this question is the movement is supported by citizens because it increases political stability by reducing the conflict that can come from democratic competition, right? That can come straight off your T-chart. But don't forget the second part. You have to say why it's wrong, right? You have to defend your position. So this is where, however, this is unlikely because it's more likely that a move to authoritarianism would not be supported as citizens have less input, which would lead to a decrease in legitimacy and political stability. So that's how you get that point. So just to summarize, 
I'm a, a strong believer in pre-writing. Take the time to set up the argument. Make sure you visualize and see what the two sides are. Do not combine those, right? Don't say some citizens might like it and some they don't. That's not the question you were asked. Tell me why citizens would or citizens wouldn't support the move to, to authoritarianism. Craft your thesis statement. This is the most important point. You can't get a reasoning point or an alternate perspective point unless you get the thesis point. So just but be very formulaic about it. Take a stand, use because, use a line of reasoning. Be sure your country specific evidence is relevant to, the, to a concept in the prompt. This is the other place you wanna take some time in your pre-writing. Use some sketch in your T-chart about like what is evidence I could use. You want your strongest evidence to be in your thesis. Make sure you, you support both pieces of evidence with strong reasoning. Um, that's where if maybe your, your evidence isn't strong enough or your reasoning is not strong enough, then you still have an opportunity to earn those points. And finally, do the two things to get this final alternative perspective point. Respond to the alternative perspective with a because, right? Explain the alternative perspective, but then respond to it why your argument is better. So thank you again for joining me. Um, hopefully you got some helpful strategies on the argument for your response. Good luck on the exam.